what's the biggest feature of a collie? It's usually not the eyes. It's really more of that big fluffy fur that's happening. So when it comes to these eyes, they're just very small. There's not a lot of detail in there, but you still kind of want to make sure that they are nice and detailed as much as possible. So what I try to do is leave room for the highlights and then just move on to the rest of the features, which includes the around the eyes and then kind of going into the ears next. There's a lot of sporadic fur movement happening, especially in the ears. So I just kind of try to incorporate some orange tones, some light ivory colors, and then some brown in there and kind of make this like fan, almost firework effect happening. And then as I build up layers and smooth it all out using that mineral spirit oil, I'm able to apply a little bit more detail afterwards. So I'm leaving a little bit of some room in the middle for more of that highlighted kind of fur that's happening, the little stray hairs that you can see. And then I use the slice tool to kind of etch in more of those stray hair details. Now I know I'm going a little bit fast in this video. It is kind of long, even though it's a five by seven size, but there's quite a lot that's happening. So these, um, the side here is not a lot of detail, but the top of the head has quite a bit of detail. And I'm incorporating a variety, once again, of the same colors, but making sure I'm using that firework effect of kind of going up and out in both directions. Still the same thing for the muzzle area. And then applying that mineral spirits just to kind of get more of a smoother blend. Now, if you don't have that, you can still just use um, lighter color pencils to create a burnishing effect, which is just applying heavier pressure to kind of blend it all together, or just simply start building up your layers. That way you have enough to make it nice and smooth. So that it doesn't look like a sketchy, um, kind of look because color pencils definitely have that sketch look. But if you keep going and applying more layers, I promise you it will not look like that in the end because you'll have nice waxy coating happening instead. And then for the second ear, it's a similar thing, but it's folded a little bit more. So you definitely want to emphasize that by making sure you're leaving room for some of those um, highlighted features kind of in the middle, as well as just folding it at a different, more direct angle. And then you can start to kind of darken it up, use different colors. Now I am using a little bit of this green tone to kind of apply a little bit more of a natural tone to the animal because almost every single animal has some sort of green tone in it, which is a natural reflection from the environment itself. So don't be afraid to apply different colors. It's a lot of fun to actually try out all sorts of different variety of colors, especially if you have a big variety of color pencils. If you don't, that's okay. You can start to um, add more later on as you start to um, play around more and start to practice more. If you are interested in the materials that I'm using, feel free to check out the color pencils materials list, which is going to be linked below. And then for the muzzle, so it still has that same fan firework effect. You're kind of going up and out in both directions. Pay attention to the highlights and the low lights. Like where is the sun coming in from? Is it lighter on the top? Is it lighter on the side? What's happening? So you definitely want to make sure that you're using lighter pressure with lighter color pencils in the highlighted areas and then start to kind of work your way into the darker areas using darker colors and heavier pressure. To be honest with you, I really wasn't enjoying how it was turning out, but in the end, I was able to kind of save it by going back and applying different kind of colors and more saturation. So with the nose here, I definitely wanted to make it blended. That way I can apply some more details and some more highlighted features. Most noses and nostrils are really similar, but no two nostril sides are the same. So if it, looks like even pretty much it's not they're they're never even so that is okay if they don't look even at all but you do want to apply a little bit of color in there so i did apply some um some burnt sienna colors now the mouth itself i always have a difficult time with tongs they always look so weird just not very uh natural to me you're gonna see in the end you may think it looks natural but for me because I'm the artist, of course, I'm going to be uh, more critical of myself. It just didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. But 
that's okay because the more I practice, the better I will get. So with the teeth, you just kind of have to leave room for those for the teeth coming in there and then just kind of darken around it and just work your way around. Ultimately, it's going to look okay. It's going to look better than you really think as long as you keep going and then, you know, finish up what's happening around it too cuz just the mouth alone, like it's just it's just floating there. There's not much happening, but once you start adding fur around it, it's really going to all start to tie together. That is one thing that I'm really grateful for when it comes to color pencils. I can still go back over some of the areas and start to apply more saturated colors or kind of just um, etch away some areas, that kind of thing. I really like that I'm able to go back and do that and actually fix those things because if it weren't for that, I think that I still would have a hard time kind of being happy with some of these portraits that maybe I'm not quite, you know, enjoying or I think it needs more saturation or this or that so I'm glad that I do go back over them even if I'm like halfway done I'll still go back over and finish some of the areas that I thought I was finished in so you can definitely do that too so you can just hit pause go back over it and then come back to the uh, newer areas so for the white part of the fur, it's actually really not that white. You can actually see a little bit more of some yellow tones, a little bit of some uh, blues in there too. So just really don't have to apply a lot of detail in there. And um, then once you kind of start to apply more details around it, you can always go back and just kind of fix up some of those areas that don't have as much detail. So this big chunk here, there's a lot going on. So this really took the longest, I feel like, was just this big old area right here and the, the um, I guess their left hand side neck ultimately like the neck and the chest area it's just kind of crazy to me that the this dog has so much fur and it's in the neck area it's just it's it's unbelievable i've not really drawn a lot of collies i think this might be one of my first ones of a rough collie is what they call it so it's just really crazy i love all the colors that are happening but wow it was quite a challenge because i really just didn't know like you know how like how am I supposed to apply all these details and whatnot because there's so many little stra straggly fur and like all of these very very straight good narrow thin pieces of fur and I just really wanted to make sure that I was going to get that so I ended up just blending it all so it looks very like washed right now but then I'm able to apply more layers on top even the highlighted parts so i used like a white color pencil to create some of those highlights too and then as i started to apply more of the um, highlights and the low lights it really started to turn out and look really good in the end and i also used the slice tool which also helps to kind of create some of those stray hairs if you're interested in those kind of materials you can still check out the materials list below and then don't forget, if you do want to learn to draw your own pet portraits, feel free to check out the pet portrait program that I have. It's also linked below. It's eight weeks long. It's super in depth. If you want to find out more information, check out that link. So I'm applying a lot more of the stray hairs at this point, just really getting in all of those details. I'm even using a little bit of a black color pencil to do so. I don't really like using the black pencil until it's pretty much one of my last steps or the last resort really just because it's such a flat color that i just don't think it really applies all too much unless it's in super dark areas like the eyes the nose the mouth and then sometimes in the hair but really ultimately i don't use it in the hair unless it's a black dog and then i'll you i'll still end up using that as more of my last uh resort I really hope that you're enjoying this video. It is almost done here, but you can see now I'm really starting to apply a lot more detail and it's just all coming in together so well. And I'm pretty proud of the results. Ultimately, I wasn't at first, but now I pretty, I, I am. It's, it's a lot of detail happening and it was a lot of work, but I really love how it turned out. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, if you have a collie yourself, or if there's a specific animal that you're kind of nervous to draw, I am more than happy to help you out.
And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.